Okay, so um, real quick, I'm going to do a quick project of installing this. Now, I had originally said I was going to place this flat uh, against this spar, but I've decided against that, mainly because I don't want to drill holes in this. I don't think that the little teeny holes that this would require would really be all that dangerous, but honestly, I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I'm just not going to do that. Uh, instead, I'm going to place it against this rib, and I'm going to drill a couple nut plates and, and screw it in. This will give me access via this door, and it'll be someplace that's fairly uh, out of the way and convenient. Um, some of y'all brought up regarding this guy, uh, since I'm going to move it from here down to about here, some of you brought up that it would be in way of this guy, which is the tie down. Um, honestly, over here, it's technically farther away from where I had it. And the this is where roughly where Vans had theirs coming out too. So uh, I think farther out on the wing, it's going to be better. It will be a little farther away from the tie down and I think it'll be okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working on here now is installing this guy or at least giving it a permanent place to live. All right, so to that end, I'm going to take this unit and the associated nut plates that go with it. I'm going to enlarge these holes so that these screws fit in there. I'm then just gonna test fit a nut plate. I'm screwed on the back just to make sure it's how I want it. And I'm gonna angle it up or down against the rib just to make sure uh, you know exactly where I'm gonna put it. And then once I've got it up there, I'm gonna mark the rib with just a, one of my felt permanent markers to know exactly where I'm gonna drill the holes. Once I find a good position for the holes, I'm gonna go ahead and drill pilot holes. And then I'm gonna uh, uh, drill the actual, I think it's number 19 screw hole that you know, upsize the hole to the correct diameter. And then I'm gonna test fit it in place with a screw just to make sure it's where I want it. And then lastly, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the nut plates in, real simple. I went through that real quick. I, I didn't figure I'd bore it, uh, bore you with the, the whole process. Long story short though, I think it came out just fine. It sits exactly where I want it, it's out of the way and uh, nothing binds or anything like that. All in, in, all, in all, I'm, I'm happy with this. So I want to talk real quick about the video that I posted just the other day. Now I had, I had actually filmed that several days ago, set it up to auto post like a week later and then completely forgot about it. Uh, and after going back and watching it, I got a lot of kind of sour, I don't want to say sour feedback, but you guys, you guys had mentioned, several of you mentioned, dude, what happened? You know, did somebody pee in your Cheerios? Are you okay? And, and, uh, I thought, Really? That okay? And I went back and I watched it. I was like, yeah, that I did come. That was kind of a downer. Sorry about that. Um, I was really tired. Uh, I think I think that day I had been out here for like eight hours uh, working on the plane, and I, I wasn't having a lot of success, so I was a little frustrated. So um, no one that wasn't aimed at anybody in particular. No one like jumped down my throat or anything. It is a common question. You know, people ask all the time, have you you know have you checked with Vans? And the answer is still no. Typically, I don't. I would rather check with other people. Uh, first, but um, yeah, sorry, that, that came across way more negatively than I meant to. So I was working on this bottom skin. Um, this is the inboard bottom skin, outboard skin goes there, and I was starting the process of installing it. Uh, the way you do that is you start at the back, you work from you know the center outward and then slowly work down, and I'm stopping. And the reason I'm stopping is because while I had my head in here and I'm looking, I realized that this will make it difficult to put the tank on. Now, these tanks are removable. They're designed to be put on and off with the bottom skin in place by reaching in here to these holes and just using a screwdriver to screw them in and out. But it's gonna suck to try to do that with the skin on. So I think I would be better served to go ahead and finish and get the tanks in place then put these skins on. So I'm going to just Clico this on here for now and stop. I'm going to start working on getting these the tanks completely finished and on the wing before I continue. Now, before somebody else says, uh, why do you have this in this jig and not laying flat on a table? I, I actually thought it would be a lot easier to work this way where I can just reach up than to try to work in a, on a flat surface where I have to reach over uh, this long distance. Remember, if the tank's here, it's going to be this, it's kind of a long reach to get up here uh, to get into this. And so far, that seems to be panning out. Of course, 
I thought it would be easier because the tank isn't here. And I thought, well, this is gonna be great. I don't have the tank on yet, so I can just reach up in here and do this real quick. One man, no problem. And then I started to think, wait a minute, how does the tank attach? It just screws, but those screws are gonna suck. And like, it's designed to be able to reach in here. Like I said, if this is, this is down and, and use a screwdriver like this to get in here, and you can see my hand. Um, it's designed to come on and off this way. It's designed to have access this way, but um, just more, I'm lazy. It's more convenient to not have the skin. So I'm gonna go put the other tank on right quick because it's actually closed and completed or at least do one more leak test on it just to make sure before I put it on uh, and then get that sucker on there and then maybe start working on that one's skin. So on this whole tank, this is the only leak I found. It was a pinhole leak of a single rivet. None of the other rivets leak. Um, the only other place that I saw was at the uh, fuel return or the vent rather. That fitting was leaking because I just had a balloon over it and I had a rubber band wrapped around the balloon and it was leaking out from the balloon. Uh, I just couldn't, couldn't get it super tight for testing purposes. I, I took the balloon off, I put my finger over the hole, blew the thing up and there was no leak other than it was just leaking out around the balloon. So that's not a leak. So hey you know one little teeny pinhole leak on the top of the tank that's not bad um i'm not going to complain overly much on that so i've marked it i've got this little sticker on here plus i've got a scratch on here i will remember that it's there um, i can even feel this rivet slightly high um so i don't know how i missed that but we'll research the best way to uh, fix this. I think probably what I'm going to do to tackle it is just smear some pro seal over the top of this, let it dry and then sand it down. So it's kind of even with the rest of the tank and that should be good to go. If there's a better way to do it, someone please comment. Let me know what the better way to go about sealing that is. For the time being though, I am going to go ahead and mount the tank on the wing because I shouldn't need any kind of you know, special access to fix this. this there's, the only way this is going to be fixable is either I drill this out and then use a pop rivet or something, uh, or just cover it over the top, I'm not sure. So anyways, we're gonna go there. I'm gonna mount up uh, the tank on the wing and then uh, move on to the next thing. On second thought, I have access to the back of this rivet. So that's, it's this rivet right here. It's this right here on this side. I literally can drill this out put pro seal inside the hole and just reset this rivet that's that's the better way to go here this is not i don't know what i was thinking i was thinking this was an inside the tank rivet it's not i have all kinds of access to this rivet hell this one's easy to fix yeah that's what i'm gonna do do that here shortly in fact I gotta find more Pro Seal though. I think all I have is a giant six ounce thing of it. But yeah. Okay. New plan of attack. I don't know why, but today has been a day of problems. Um, okay, so to reiterate what I'm gonna do, this is the only leak I have found in this tank. So uh, this one rivet, which is the you know aftmost set of rivets, which I have access to right back here. This is it. This is the one little little teeny pinhole leak that my bubble test found. Uh, you know, little little bubbles appeared, and, and this one I, that's easy to fix. Um, I can basically cut out the back here, drill this guy out, put some Pro Seal in there, reseat the rivet, and reseal it, and I think we'll be good to go. That's the only problem I have on this tank, and I'm gonna knock that out presently. So that's the left tank. The left tank has a pinhole in one of the upper rivets, no big deal. I'm gonna take care of it, knock it out, get that sorted. My right tank is being more difficult. So I had showed you in a previous video that my right tank failed my initial leak test. Basically, uh, down on the end, for whatever reason, I'm getting some dripping coming out of there, and I don't know why I've poured a ton of Pro Seal in there. At this point, in fact, I've put three times the Pro Seal in there that my other tank has. Still has a leak. I'm done with that. I'm now gonna go back through and I'm gonna scrape all that Pro Seal out and try to figure out what the hell's going on. I'm not willing to just keep pouring more and more Pro Seal on it because obviously that's not doing the trick. So there's something I have missed. So I'm gonna dig out all that Pro Seal and try to figure out what the hell's going on. Hopefully it's something simple, I don't know. 
but we obviously can't have a leak. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. So as you can see behind me here, what I did is I completely removed all of that excess pro seal off that bottom part of the fuel tank where that leak was happening. And uh, first of all, pro seal is tough to get off. I found the best way to get it off is a Dremel. Uh, using like a wire disc or some one of those hard sanding um, blocks, uh, uh, the, that cut right through it, especially the, the, the wire disc. Wear a mask because it just it smokes real bad and you get pro seal dust everywhere, so definitely wear protection. Um, but once I got all that off, I started filling it full of water. I got it you know up to where it was starting to leak before, bone dry. So then I said, all right, so I filled it all the way up past the, the bottom piece of metal entirely, still bone dry. So now the water is at that level and we're completely dry, whereas previously at that level, it would be leaking. In removing the pro seal, I've sealed it. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> How does removing the sealant seal it? Uh, my only guess is, is the, the Dremel caused it to get hot enough to melt and seal? I, I, I don't know. So now that I've marked that area up with the Dremel, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some Pro Seal, reseal the area, and hopefully it'll be good to go. If it's not good to go, then I know that's not where the leak is. Uh, but at this point, it seems like that's where the leak was. I don't know. Uh, Uh, all right, so it's coming up on six o'clock. I've been out here for like eight hours uh, and I'm, I'm a little pissed off, so I'm ready to go home. Um, I'm trying to hang my tank and I've been trying to hang this all day and I, I've got binding. Something over here, most likely that pro seal is binding up over here and I can't get it to unbind. Um, it, I just can't get this thing to seat correctly, so Oh, I'm, I'm not happy about that, but it is what it is. I'm going to continue to work on that, uh, get that pro seal out of there. I've already gone through and I burned some of it off using the Dremel. By the way, Dremel, that is the way to take pro seal off. I can't take off any more pro seal though. At this point, I'm right up to the metal. It's like if I take off any more pro seal, I'm basically removing the, the, the ceiling. I mean, I don't understand. So... There's a lip of metal in here. I may grind it down a little just on the inside to see if maybe that gets this damn thing where it needs to be. But that's what I'm at right now. I'm trying to get this tank to hang and I it does not want to hang. So I'm going home. I'll be back. Hmm. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is, so this lip of metal that you see right here, um, it sticks out an inch and there's nut plates, you know, put all the way through it. It's around the nose of the wing and all the way back up. And that's where you slip the fuel tank up onto and you screw it in. The problem is, is that slip of metal is too long. It actually butts up against the inner rib and the pro seal that's in there to help seal the tank. Um, up to now, what I've been doing is I've been slowly dremeling out some of that pro seal to try to, to, to make room and, and get it to fit up in there. And I just can't do it. So I've made a command decision. I'm going to cut that piece of metal. Um, if you see right here, you can see there's actually a good amount of space between the uh, the, the, the edge of the metal and where the nut plate is. And so I'm thinking I'm going to cut off some of that metal to make it easier to slide that fuel tank up on there. I've talked to somebody else on the, on the airport and they said they have no reason why it would, you know, be as long, why it is, is go ahead and cut it. Uh, I've not checked with vans. <laughs> I'm not going to, it's going to be okay. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm hopefully going to get that darn fuel tank to fit up on there. Super frustrated at that, that it, it I just, it just couldn't get it up on there. And then what really frustrated me was, you know, after I dremeled away some of that pro seal, I realized I may have just screwed up my, my seal of the tank. So now I have to retest the seal of the tank. Uh, it's never ending by quick build wings. 
So there you go. Uh, you can see here in the background, I went through and I cut off about a tenth of an inch of that metal, that little lip, uh, because again, when you pushed everything up in there, just the two bits of metal kind of were rubbing and it was keeping me from pushing everything into place. Once I cut that off, I went through and I, I did my best to, to, you know, deburr and remove any sharp uh, edges and whatnot. Really no big deal. You can barely tell that I removed any metal. You wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. Uh, and then you'll never see it because once the wing, the tank is in place, it covers it entirely. Uh, the, the tank went on seamlessly without any problem at that point. Uh, however, you can see in this picture right here, there's that little tiny bit of skin that overlaps. Uh, that means I need to go back through and uh, just trim some of that uh, off a little bit. So I'm going to have to pull the tank back off, trim some of that little tiny bit of overlap off, and then put the tank back on and then it will be permanently in place. So I'm supremely happy with how it all came out. Took a lot of effort. Uh, I did do some more leak tests, by the way, and the tank appears fine. Uh, but I do want to talk to Vans. I guess Vans has a some sort of leak testing jig or something someone said I, I don't know i'm gonna research it and I'll, I'll give you more information as i get it but anyways guys that's where i'm gonna end this one thank you very much hit that like button if you like what i'm doing on this channel subscribe if you haven't subscribed click the bell if you want notifications and if you really like what i'm doing jump over to my patreon page and for as little as a dollar a month you guys can help me make these videos uh, also if you do want to order one of these kits if you use my builder number which is in the comments down below uh, vans will send me a hundred bucks thanks everybody really appreciate it can't wait to see you at oshkosh by the way if there's anything at oshkosh you guys think you must, must, must see, put it in the comments. Thanks.